Some of the salaries are, are, are really bouncing on the bottom. Do you know what a paramedic starts at, his or her salary, Secretary of State? Um, well, I thought you were going to ask me about nurses because the, the first strike we're going to have on, on, on is nurses. A, a nursing starting salary is 25 and a half, um, and what, we're taking it up to, to 27. What about a paramedic? Um, Where does he or she start? Uh, I, so we all recognise, as a result of the pandemic, there are huge pressures okay. on and the yet NHS, you are and that's not, why we're prioritising it. You're not prepared it. to improve your <clears throat> offer of around 4.7. 5% as an increase to pay at all. What I'm saying is we have an independent process that looks at these issues which in the round. Which makes recommendations. And, but what we have done through the autumn statement is prioritise the NHS, an extra £6.6 .6 billion over the next two years, an extra £2.8 billion next year, £4.7 billion the following year. So the Scottish year Government have taken a different care. approach and that well, is the, the why Scottish there are no strikes scheduled. In well, Scotland, the, from in the health service, the Scottish government have not only uh, adjusted on pay; they've also adjusted on productivity, and that will have an impact on what they can deliver for patients in Scotland. And what I am saying is, we are prioritising getting the balance in terms of pay. We're looking at all the other things we can do for staff because staff tell me it's not simply an issue of pay. Is uh, and now facing another real terms uh, a pay cut. Uh, they simply can't afford to pay their their mortgages, pay their rent, uh, buy food, uh, put fuel in the car, pay for childcare, pay for everything else. Um, so, what what is the end game here? Are we just going to have strike after strike after strike and just have a war of attrition? And meanwhile, elderly people are lying on the floor for days on end, unable to get an ambulance. People are going to die. Children are going to die. You know that's what's going to happen if we don't have an ambulance or a health service that is working properly. So, what's the end game here? We've got hospital waiting lists that are huge. We've got people yep. not being picked up by ambulances. We've got people not being able to get into, get into hospital because they're told there aren't enough beds and there aren't enough doctors and there aren't enough nurses. We're about to have strikes going on there. And you've just given me a list of diagnosis centres. I mean, that... I mean, even if they were all in place tomorrow, that wouldn't fix the problem, would it? What is going to happen this well, winter? No, Should people feel safe taking their, themselves or their elderly parents or their children to accident and emergency? Well, there's a huge range of things we can do, and we can we can go through in turn uh, how we're responding in terms of the the workforce pressures, the extra people that we're recruiting. There's three percent more doctors this year than last year, three percent more nurses, an extra thousand nurses. In terms of paramedics, Sorry, we've got. Can I just we've check got on those statistics? In... Is that the actual, is that more recruited or the total number of doctors and nurses in place at the moment? Because retention, the, the... it's not just about recruitment. Retention is crucial. Of too. course it is. Of course it is. So so that's the number of doctors in place. But you're right. We've got more in training. As well. well, it depends on what pan band uh, they are. So I don't have that uh, exactly well, so to band five, to hand, as say. So if they're at band five, yeah. what would their salary be? Uh, well, a band five nurse starts at twenty five and a half. So so that was the figure I had in my head there this morning. Okay, coming in, you're right. They start between twenty five thousand six hundred and fifty five to thirty one thousand five hundred and thirty four yeah. pounds. These are the paramedics we're talking about. Of course, are all the front pages. We're very nervous about this ambulance strike that's looking like the twenty first of December. If you're making that kind of money and you've been offered a well below inflationary pay rise, something like 4.75%, I read, why should you accept a pay cut? Because, firstly, I think we've got to look at it in the, in the, in the round. So uh, the 25 and a half uh, starting salary is going up to 27 with the 5.5% the, uh, increase for, for starting staff that we're putting in place. Secondly, actually, the take-home pay is usually on average 31,000 because uh, it's common for people to do some overtime as well. We have a very generous pension scheme, so a fifth of the salary uh, of a band five goes in to the pension. That's 20% from taxpayer. We have uh, a more generous uh, sick pay and an annual leave than would normally be the case that for many of your viewers. That doesn't help them Sainsbury's because, Arrasta, though, does it, respectfully? Well, the, the, the trade unions... Well, well, you say it doesn't help help them. Well, it doesn't uh, help them the, pay the, the bills, unions, does it? The trade unions say that it's extremely important as part of the wider package of remuneration. So the point I'm making is there's a, a package of remuneration. And if really what's at the heart of your question, Nick, is should we just be paying everyone in line with inflation, which seems to be what you're saying, well, that would come at a cost of £28 billion extra a year. Steve Barclay needs to listen and engage with us about pay. If he can't talk to us about this most basic workforce issue, what on earth is he health secretary for? Well, the trade unions themselves have said to me it's not just about pay. They've said there's many issues that affect staff, the quality of the NHS estate, the tech, uh, 
uh, and whether that is helping them, uh, safety of staff, staffing levels. So there's a range of issues that the NHS unions have said that matter. In terms of pay, we have an independent process which looks at these issues in terms of what's the right balance for your viewers in terms of their taxes, the wider pressures that the economy is under, and what well, let me, is let me put this. We've only got a finite amount of time, as you know, Minister. Uh, the Royal College of Nursing, um, their General Secretary, Pat Cullen, saying you're refusing her request for negotiations. No, what I'm saying is I'm very happy to have talks with them. There's a range of issues. So when she's I wrong to Pat. say that. When I met with Pat, she raised a number of issues of concern. Pay was one. Uh, but it wasn't the only one. In every other area of life, we seem to think, well, if you can't get enough people at this pay rate, you'll have to pay more. But in the healthcare service, we don't seem to think that. 140,000 vacancies uh, across the board, is it 10% of the staff needed? We've got 7 million people on waiting lists. Those are just the people who've managed to get on the waiting list, have got an appointment at a GP already. We're seeing people dying of cancer, of diabetes, of heart disease, now children dying of strep, which we'll come on to, uh, and, and often because they're not able to get the care they need quickly enough. Mm -hmm. or, um, mm -hmm. Is, I mean, surely the answer is, for a lot of people, more money, or is it reform, or is it... But we can't go on like this. We're a first-world country, and we're basically saying we accept the fact you can't get an operation for a year, and if you're 80 years old and you have a fall in your home, no-one's going to turn up. We cannot accept that that is the new norm. So, uh, I think it's a combination of factors. So, this, uh, we are boosting numbers. There's 3% more doctors this year than last year. There's 3% more nurses, an extra 1,000, uh, 9,000 more nurses this year compared to last year. The In terms of GPs, there's about 2,300 more than at the time of the, the last general election as part of our commitment there. But it's also about okay. the wider primary Since, care. Sorry, workers. sorry, I, I seem to have different figures. Since 2019, the total fully qualified full-time equivalent GPs in England has fallen by 719. So it's 2,300 more uh, doctors in primary care since 2019. We've got around 9,000 GPs. So are uh, they GP fully qualified full-time equivalent GPs. GPs? Well, there's a range of jobs in primary care. And so the, the point I'm making is we've, we're recruiting more we're recruiting more people into primary care. There's a whole range of workforce that works okay, in we, primary there's care. There's an we've argument got, about gross and net we've got this morning. Um, have we got a net so, loss of full-time GPs? We've got more doctors in primary care, but we've got more people working in primary care as a whole. Now, a GP no, sorry, itself... The, the a figure GP, we've got well, is that we've got look, a loss of GPs. Mean, GPs... Yeah, but, and, and GPs take you 10 seem years. to be using other, uh, other words... But the fact okay. of the matter is we're losing. We've got a net loss of GPs. Meanwhile, well, we you had to, a manifesto well, we pledge. In yeah. Hang on. Yeah. You had a manifesto pledge in 2019 that you would increase the GP workforce by 6,000 yes. by 2025. Yes. You're nowhere near that. Why hasn't Michelle Moan had the whip removed? Well, she's taken the leave of absence. Yeah, but why did she have the whip removed? The, uh, well... Matters in terms of the whip were always for the, the chief whip, and that's a, a long-standing convention. But she's taken the leave of absence from the House of Lords, so she's not able to go to the House of Lords. And it's right that these issues are investigated, and that's what the department is doing, uh, and that's what the House of Lords authorities are doing. Did you have any dealings with her at all during that time? No. Nothing at all? No. Well, she I was in the Department you, of Health. No, but you were in the Treasury, I was in you? the Treasury, yeah. yeah. She, she didn't approach to you? To the best of my knowledge, no, I can't. Uh, I'm certain not.